hello everyone in this video we are going to learn about borel sets and we are going to see a few examples of borel sets and this would be useful for us when we learn measure theory and probability theory the basics of the basics of it it would also be used in defining what is a measure space and probability space so this is quite important if you want to learn more about probability theory okay so let's start let's see what is a borel set so borel set is a set in a topological space so it's a set in topological space let's say we have a topological space of a uh, set of real numbers for example we have a euclidean space and this can be formed from open sets through the operations of countable union countable intersection and relative component complement okay so let's see an example of this so let's suppose we have a, a set s which is a set of real numbers between the closed intervals of 1 and 2 on the real real number line so we have a number line here which is which goes from negative infinity to positive infinity so from 1 to 2 we have this set and we are going to define borel subsets inside this set okay so we have a set s which is a set of all real numbers in the closed interval from 1 to 2 okay so basically any borel set which uh, which is of the form let's say x comma y so a set which is in this open interval like this and such that x and y are inside 1 and 2 can be considered as a borel subset okay so for example this set a which is defined as the set of all real numbers in the open interval from 1.5 to 1.7 so here this borel set a is a uh, is a borel set on s okay similarly we have another uh, set b which which is a set of all real numbers in the open interval of minus one of 1.6 to 1.9 so b is also a borel subset of s okay now we will define something known as a borel sigma algebra so in the previous video we have already discussed about sigma algebra and how to determine whether something is a sigma algebra or not so the collection of all borel sets for s forms sigma algebra so all the borel subsets in s such as a b and many other borel sets they all collection of all those sets form a sigma algebra and that sigma algebra is known as borel sigma algebra on s okay so now let's go and dive into some examples of what uh, borel subsets can be formed from this space Hmm. So as we have already seen the basic examples of A and B being the Borel sets on S, we let's take an example of this. So we have the set of all real numbers in the closed interval of 1.5 and open interval of 1.7. So this means that 1.5 is included in this set and all the set of real numbers till 1.7 and 1.7 is not included in this one. So let's say the real number which is slightly smaller than 1.7 we can denote it as 1.7 minus so this is present in in this set but 1.7 is not present in this set and it contains 1.5 okay so let's see if this is a borel set or not now let's go by the definition we know that an open uh, set such that x comma y set of all real numbers between this where x and y are inside 1 and 2 they form a borel set okay by definition so we would know that a set which is slightly bigger than this is a borel set we know that 1.4 let's say open interval 1.4 to 1.8 it is a borel set okay and we also know that borel sets can be formed using countable union countable intersections and the relative complement what does this mean 
this means that if i have a union of two borel sets that is also a borel set so let's say i have the set of real numbers between 1.2 and 1.5 in an open interval i have a set of another real numbers between the open interval of 1.6 to 1.7 so a union b would also be a borel set also a borel set similarly let's say i have like a1 a2 a3 1.8 to 1.9 similarly you can define a ends so the countable union of all of these a ends so union of a i's i equals 1 to n the countable union of all of these sets also is a borel set similarly let's say i have a borel set a1 and let's say i have a2 as 1.3 to 1.7 a3 as 1.1 to 1.9 so the countable intersections of all such ais is also a borel set so for example uh, we let's take an intersection of a1 a2 and a3 so the intersection of a1 a2 and a3 would be something like this so this is 1 this is 2 a1 is let's say 1.2 to 1.5 this is a1 a2 would be 1.3 to 1.7 this is a2 the shaded region and a3 is 1.1 to 1.9 containing all so we can see that the region 1.3 to 1.5 is present in all the three of sets so a1 intersection a2 intersection a3 would be 1.3 to 1.5 in the open interval so this also forms a borel set okay so now we have covered that that if a borel set inside a space s is present then the countable union and the countable intersection of that borel set is also a borel set similarly the relative complement of a borel set is also a borel set so let's say i have a borel set 1.2 to let's say 1.7 and the complement of this in the space 1 comma 2 would be something like this 1 to 1.2 closed interval union 1.7 to 2 so this set the set of all real numbers in these closed intervals would also be a borel set okay so now let's see whether this set is a borel set or not let's take some examples okay so yes this is a borel set how is this a borel set let's see we know that let's draw it on a number line so this is the real number line we know a a set in an open interval like this can be called as a borel set so we can say that 1.45 to let's say 1.75 open interval this is a borel set yes it follows this convention this is present in 1 comma 2 it's present inside this set okay now if i take the intersection of this to let's say 1.46 to 1.76 so this would be nothing but 1.46 to sorry this is 1.74 so if we take the intersection of these two we would get this as the result so this is also a borel set then again take an intersection of these two with let's say 1.47 to 1.73 
so you see what i'm doing here i'm slowly narrowing down this boundary of the open set okay similarly if i do this till countably infinite times we can see that the closed interval of 1.5 would also be achieved through this let's see how so let's define a borel set 1.5 minus 1 by k to 1.7 closed interval okay this is a borel set let's say the value of k is 4 okay so this is 0.25 this would be open set 1.25 to 1.7 okay that's a borel set take the intersection using take the intersection and now let's say k equals 5 so if we take the compute the value of this one this would turn out to be 1 1 by 5 is 0.2 so this would be 1.3 to 1.7 similarly take the intersection of count countably infinite such sets and increment k in each time so which would basically mean this intersection k equals 4 to infinite 1.5 minus k 1 by k comma 1.7 and as you can see as we reach infinity we would be closer and closer to 1.5 so this anyways is 1.7 anyways is a open set so we don't need to care about this but slowly and slowly we are going to come closer to 1.5 so this would be something like this 1.3 to 1.7 intersection with 1.2 sorry 1.25 1.7 intersection with 1.3 1.7 intersection till we reach 1.5 minus 1 by k where k tends to infinity and 1.7 so as you can see we are taking the intersection of infinite number of sets but is this allowed because is infinity countable in this case yes it is countable so there are two types of infinities countable infinity and uncountable infinity so countable infinity is nothing but an a set of like infinite elements which can be mapped one to one on the scale of natural numbers because that's how we usually count we count from 1 2 3 and we go on while an uncountable infinity is a set of infinite elements in which we cannot map them 1 to 1 to a set of natural numbers let's take an example of this so let's say the set of natural numbers is a countable infinity because we can count we can count it 1 2 3 till infinity similarly let's say the set of natural numbers such that every uh, every natural number incre incremented by 0.1 is also present in the set so let's say 1.1 1 is present in the set 1.1 is present in the set 2 is present in the set 2.1 is also present in the set 3 is present 3.1 is present similarly it will go till infinity so this is also a countable infinity why what you can do is you can create a mapping of this with the set of natural numbers and we can actually count it so let's say 1 would be mapped to 1 1.1 would be mapped to 2 2 would be mapped here 2.1 would be mapped here and similarly this can go on hence the set of natural numbers plus this set which we defined are examples of countable infinite sets now let's take an example of uncountable infinite sets so for example the set of real numbers in the interval 0 to 1 this is uncountable 
uh, infinite uh, elements because you cannot have a mapping of this with the natural numbers you cannot have a one to one mapping because in between two real numbers there is always a real number which you can find and you can fit it here hence it's not a one to one mapping to the set of natural numbers hence that would be an uncountable infinite so as we can see since we are allowed to have a countably infinite number of sets and the intersection of all of those sets is also a borel set so we can take this intersection of all the sets from k equals to 4 to infinity 1.5 minus 1 by k comma 1.7 would be closed interval 1.5 to 1.7 as it would slowly approach this open interval will slowly approach 1.5 and will always contain 1.5 Hence, this is a Borel set. Similarly, let's see if this is a Borel set or not. Yes, it is also a Borel set. So, similar to the previous example, if we take an intersection of all of those sets such that k equals 1 to 4, open interval 1.5 to 1.7 plus 1 by k, this would also reach this set as you can see from 1.5 to 1.7 we are slowly reducing the open interval from the right hand side and it would include 1.7 okay as this would be nothing but 1.5 1.95 intersection 1.5 to 1.9 and so on till 1.5 to 1.7 plus 1 by k where k tends to infinity so since 1.7 plus 1 1 by k is present it is slightly towards the right of 1.7 hence it contains the number 1.7 hence this is also a borel set now is this a borel set so just like previous two examples we can say that intersection from let's say k equals 4 to infinity 1.5 minus 1 by k to 1.7 plus 1 by k this would narrow our sets down to these intervals and this would achieve this so 1.5 and 1.7 open uh, closed intervals would also be a borel set now is the num is the rational number 1.5 a borel set yes it is because we again use the same technique of taking countable intersections so let's say we have a set in the open interval like this 1.5 to 1.5 plus 1 by k Take the countable intersections, infinite such countable in intersections from k equals 4 to infinity. So here we have 1.5 and we have closed intervals like this. This we will take the intersection using this, we will slowly narrow it down and come to 1.5. So as you can see this would be 1.25 to 1.75 intersection point. 3 to 1.7 and slowly it will come close to 1.5 minus 1 by k and 1.5 plus 1 by k where k tends to infinity okay so this set 1.5 is also a borel set so it seems like most of the sets present in the open interval 1 to 5 in the Euclidean topology uh, if this is like a real a set of real numbers between 1 to 2 most of the sets are Borel sets there are a few exceptions of the sets which are not a Borel set but we, that is out of the scope for this course so mo you can take the examples of the uh, take the above examples and the uh, follow the basic rule of thumb that 
any set which can be uh, which is an open set and can be formed through the operations of countable union countable intersection and the relative component is a borel set so now you can also take an example like this is a set containing rational numbers with let's say five in the decimal place so any the from the set of real numbers 1 to 2 any rational number which contains 5 the digit 5 in its uh, decimal place so for example 1.05 or 1.15 or let's say 1.55 these all satisfy this property the set, so set of all such rational numbers is that a borel set or not let's see so for one element we have already proved that 1.5 is a borel set so we can say that 1.5 here is a borel set it's countable union with let's say one another set like this 1.55 would also be a borel set and if it is countably infinite that is fine countable countable union of all such sets would form a borel set okay so basically we need to see if the rational numbers if all the rational numbers are countable or not for that we have a small trick you can map the set of rational numbers like this so let's say we have a scale like this one two three four five this is a set of natural numbers till infinity on the y-axis you can have something like this this goes till infinity so a rational number is represented by p and q where p and q are co primes of each other okay even if it is something like 4 by 6 you can reduce it to 2 by 3 and this works fine so we see this rational number let's say from for example here this would be 1 by 1 so in this coordinate it is represented as 1 comma 1 but this is actually 1 by 1 which is 1 this would be 2 by 1 which is 2 similarly this coordinate 1 2 comma 1 can be represented as 1 by 2 which is half it is also a rational number similarly this would be 2 by 2 which is again the same as 1 so you can see we can form a grid like this and this would have all the rational numbers present okay so this has the set of all rational numbers which are present from let's say uh, 0 to infinity you can extend this for minus infinity to 0 as well okay it works on the same logic now what you can do is to cover all of these points on the grid you can follow a path like this let's say a string which follows a path like this contains every such set and if we take this string and create a one to one mapping to a set of natural numbers we can see that since this is only one string we can actually create a one to one mapping for the set of natural numbers okay so all rational numbers the set of rat uh, rational numbers are countably infinite okay it has countably infinite number of elements the set of rational numbers so since the set of all rational numbers are uh, consisting of like a countably infinite number of uh, elements so the set of all rational numbers inside 1 comma 2 would also contain would also be countably infinite so set of all rational numbers in the interval 1 comma 2 is also countably infinite so this contains countably infinite number of elements
so now coming back to our original example where we wanted a rational number between 1 comma 2 such that it contained 5 in its in one of its decimal places at least once let's say it's something like this 1.0235 blah 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 it, if it contains this then then this satisfies the condition so what we can do is we can create a countably infinite number of such sets using this and take a union of all of those sets and that would also form a Borel set so for example this set 1.05 union with 1.005 union with 1.0005 and so on it can contain anything 1.6785 union 1.9995 so set of all such rational numbers are countable in countably infinite and taking the countable union of all of those is also a Borel set as it satisfies the property so this is one such uh, outlying example of Borel set which is not quite intuitive but this also forms a Borel set. So I hope the explanation of Borel sets and its example is clear. I hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching.